There are a ton of awesome weapons in Marvel Comics. Today we're diving into the realm of absolute power, counting down the most insane weapons the Marvel Comic Universe has to offer. We created a 7 attribute scoring system to help us compare these weapons. The attributes are as follows. The wielder's requirement, any special requirements beyond skill to wield, destructive power, how devastating a weapon is, versatility, how adaptable a weapon is in situations, longevity and staying power, its lasting impact on targets, control and handling difficulty, how easily a weapon can be wielded, potential for corruption, if the weapon can corrupt or lead to negative consequences, and lastly, scope of influence, measuring the impact of the weapon's use. You can find the details in the description below. Get ready to witness the kind of firepower that makes Captain America's shield look like a kid's toy and the cosmic cubes like a party trick. The staff of one's tail begins with Tokiko Minoru, who defeated the mystical entity known as the One, choosing to become her sword, the One transformed into the staff. This powerful artifact gains freedom during specific celestial alignments. Passed down through generations, Tina Minoru received the staff from her predecessor, Judy Minoru. The tradition of conveying the rules and conditions of the staff continued across centuries, shaping its wielders. The staff's journey took a surprising turn when Tina attacked Nico in an attempt to revive their children. Instead of harm, the staff was absorbed into Nico's body. Over time, Nico mastered the staff's power, becoming proficient in its use. During a trip to 1907, Nico's encounter with her ancestor, the Witchbreaker, reshaped the staff's appearance and bestowed new powers upon her. However, this increase in power led to uncontrollable spells and the staff attacking those who sought it. In a dire confrontation in Murder World, Nico faced a brutal defeat. However, powered by her own blood magic, she cast a spell that resurrected her, formed a new magical arm, and restored the Staff of One. The Staff of One operates on blood magic, requiring a blood offering to cast spells. It recognizes different masters, but attempts to cast the same spell twice, resulting in unpredictable outcomes. The strength of the Staff wanes over time, requiring reabsorption until the next use. The staff appears to have affinities for certain individuals, particularly the women of Tokiko Minoru's bloodline. When closely linked to its bearer, the staff grants self-propelled flight without the need for any incantations. Nico renegotiated the contract with the One, allowing him to have a voice and hear the outside world with each spell. To avoid losing herself, Nico entrusted the staff to Carolina during her space travels with the Light Brigade. The Staff of One offers the wielder many spells. Powered by blood magic, this staff is no joke. Mjolnir's origins trace back to a moon made of Uru, shattered during an epic battle between Elder Gods. A piece of this moon found its way to Nidaveller, where dwarves gifted it to Odin for saving them from trolls. The Allfather then tasked the dwarves to forge the mighty Mjolnir using the powerful Uru. The process was intense, taking 17 weeks and resulting in the explosion of a star, potentially explaining the extinction of dinosaurs on Earth. When Odin first tried to wield Mjolnir, he struggled due to the lingering power of the god Tempest. The hammer wreaked havoc on Asgard until Odin, out of spite, cast an enchantment, preventing anyone else from wielding it. Despite this, Odin wielded Mjolnir during his time with the prehistoric Avengers. However, the hammer was eventually stored away in Asgard's armory, its true power waiting to be unleashed. Mjolnir's most famous attribute is its worthiness enchantment. Only those deemed worthy can lift it, gaining access to Thor's powers and its mystical attributes. The enchantment remains effective even if the hammer is cut in half or altered by reality warping. Thor and Odin have the ability to alter the enchantment, adding a layer of intrigue and layer of complexity. Mjolnir and its user share a mystical link, allowing the wielder to command the hammer. Through sheer will, the hammer can pass through barriers and even carve through planets to reach its master. Thor can use Mjolnir for teleportation, creating wormholes, and traveling across dimensions with ease. Mjolnir grants its wielder the ability to manipulate weather on a planetary scale, controlling elements such as rain, wind, thunder, and lightning. Additionally, the hammer can project powerful mystical beams of energy, including the devastating God Blast, capable of defeating cosmic entities like Galactus. Mjolnir's powers are seemingly endless, 
from energy absorption and redirection to matter manipulation, the hammer allows for a vast array of abilities. Whether it's invisibility, energy sensing, or even life force adoption, Mjolnir stands as a beacon of cosmic might in the Marvel Universe. The story of Mandarin's rings begins with Makulin technology containing the trapped souls of legendary cosmic warriors. These ten cylinders found their way to Earth through the starship of Axon Kar, a Makulin explorer. The Mandarin, drawn to their power, claimed the rings after a fatal encounter with Axon Kar. Wearing them like rings, the Mandarin unlocked their formidable powers, setting the stage for a saga of cosmic proportions. When the Mandarin wore all the rings together, the spirits within influenced his thoughts, leading him towards a sinister goal, the resurrection of their long-dead cosmic warrior selves. Kidnapping Tony Stark and using the Titanomech's powerful robots, the Mandarin attempted to fulfill the ring's will. However, Stark rebelled, leading to the destruction of the Titanomech's and the rings falling into S.H.I.E.L.D. custody. The ring's journey took an unexpected turn when the Regellian Recorder 451's alien frequency upgraded their AI, granting them sentience. Escaping S.H.I.E.L.D., the rings sought new hosts, leading to a diverse array of individuals, each wielding a specific ring. From warlords to reporters, the rings found hosts with unique characteristics and motivations. The struggle for control over Mandarin's rings intensified as Malakath, a dark elf, sought to claim the rings for himself. Iron Man intervened, sparking a confrontation with other ring holders. Through unexpected alliances and confrontations, the fate of the rings hung in the balance. Enter Ironheart. Riri Williams took center stage in the saga of Mandarin rings. From infiltrating source control to a confrontation with the living laser, Ironheart faced challenges that tested her limits. Tony Stark's warnings of the rings' misfortune echoed, yet Ironheart pressed on using the rings in unexpected ways. As Ironheart embarked on a mission in space, Makulin Dragon warned of the ring's curse. The dragon's ominous words about corruption and the sealed spirits within the rings added a layer of complexity to Ironheart's journey, became a battle not just against external threats, but also against the potential corruption within. Over a millennium ago, eight magical beings known as the Octessence engaged in the Wager of Octessence. These beings include Balthak, Sidorak, and others created totems with fragments of their power. The first human to touch a totem would become an exemplar, embodying that being's power and leading one-eighth of the population into a mystical battle. Sidorak's temple in Korea housed one of these totems, guarded by the entity Zorak. The Ancient One's curiosity led him to the temple, where he banished Zorak to the crimson cosmos within the gem. Centuries later, during the Korean War, Kane Marco and Charles Xavier discovered the temple. Ignoring warnings, Kane touched the gem, becoming the Juggernaut. The collapsing temple trapped Kane, but he eventually freed himself, leaving the gem behind. It's theorized that the temple's destruction delayed the wager's activation. The Juggernaut's powers fueled by the gem's blood magic are formidable. Attempts to purge his powers led to Charles Xavier's coma, and later the X-Men used a prototype gem from the Crimson Cosmos to cure Xavier and defeat the Juggernaut. The gem thrown into space by the Juggernaut found its way back to Earth via Nova. A boy named Stevie discovered the gem, gaining unique powers. Kane Marco later reclaimed the gem from Stevie, becoming infused with its power. Tom Cassidy, seeking more power, briefly became a second juggernaut using the gem. Unsatisfied, a battle ensued, with Rogue absorbing his powers, but fate had other plans. Onslaught ripped the gem from Juggernaut's chest, trapping Kane in the Crimson Cosmos. Gomer and Tar empowered Kane, allowing him to defeat Sidorak and return to Earth with the gem. The incredible energies of the gem can cause anyone that comes into contact with it to transform into Sidorak's exemplar, the Juggernaut, a nearly unstoppable individual. The Juggernaut possesses immense strength, stamina, and doesn't need to sleep, eat, drink, or even breathe. Casket of Ancient Winters, a powerful artifact found itself in the hands of the mighty Surtur. Seeking to defeat Thor, Surtur unleashed the chilling power of the casket on Earth, causing widespread panic. 
In a heroic alliance, Thor, alongside Earth's other champions, thwarted the Searcher's plans and safeguarded the artifact to prevent further misuse. In a mysterious turn of events, the casket resurfaced in the possession of the dark elf Yagerfelm. Before he could wield its power for his own sinister purposes, he met his demise at the hands of Malketh the Accursed, the leader of the Dark Elves. Malketh seized control of the casket and set his sights on waging war against Asgard. Malketh's use of the casket plunged Asgard into a bitter struggle. The frigid power of the artifact reached even the depths of hell, causing concern among its inhabitants. The frost giants known for their strength were incapacitated and the calamity even affected powerful beings like Ulik, the strongest of the trolls. Faced with the chilling consequences, Thor sought a solution. Enter the secret gem of infinite suns concealed with Odin's personal treasures. Thor retrieved the gem and harnessed its mighty powers to rectify the havoc caused by Malkith. Thor, with the casket and the gem, made a bold decision. He sent both artifacts into an unknown dimension, leaving their fate uncertain. The question lingers, will the casket of ancient winters and the gem of infinite suns ever resurface in the Marvel Universe? The first version of the Oversword of Asgard is shrouded in mystery and originated from a cursed Nibelung ring of gold. This ring, with the potential to bring doom to Asgard, led to significant sacrifices including Odin's mortal incantation of Thor. To atone for his greed, Odin sacrificed himself using the split ring as bands to hang onto Yadrasil. However, upon learning of the impending arrival of the Celestials, Odin freed himself and transformed the ring into the Odin Sword. A gigantic sword that, if unsheathed, would mark the end of the universe. Only Odin could safely draw the sword due to the potent curse. Despite being used as a weapon for the destroyer armor, the Odin sword proved futile against the mighty Celestials. Thor took matter into his own hands, hurling the Odin sword into a formidable Celestial, Arshem, the Judge, the leader of the fourth host. Surprisingly, Arshem remained unharmed, prompting an analysis of the sword. In an unexpected turn of events, Aresha melted down the Odin Sword, exercising the curse in the process. The second version of the Odin Sword emerged during the Serpent's War. Odin presented this sword to Thor, naming it Ragnarok, the end of all things. It played a critical role in the final confrontation with Kull Borson, deemed the only weapon capable of defeating him. At the dawn of the seventh cosmos, Null, the Dark God, was discovered by the Celestials and appointed as the King in Black. However, Null's rebellion led to the creation of the first symbiote from his shadow, forming a sword used to behead one of the Celestials. As a consequence, Null was banished, but within the Celestial's head, the primordial symbiote was infused with divine power. Crafted from living darkness, the Necro Sword became the instrument of Null's rampage, earning it the ominous title of the God Slayer. Metaphysically linked to the decapitated Celestial's undead corpse, All Black found its place in the realm between, a grotesque afterlife imprisoning souls slain by the Necro Sword. When Null faced defeat in battle against the Golden Armored Gods, All Black severed its ties with him. It then bonded to Gore an alien with a deep resentment for deities inadvertently following Null's path. Gore became the infamous God Butcher, wielding All Black to slay gods across the cosmos, feeding on their blood and evolving into an evil god himself. Transported to the far future, Gore utilized All Black to create a planetoid for his God Bomb, a cataclysmic plan to exterminate gods throughout time and space. In a cinematic battle involving multiple versions of Thor, the God Bomb was unleashed. Thor absorbed its power, bonding with All Black and defeating Gore. However, to prevent All Black from corrupting a dying Thor, King Thor cast the Necro Sword and Gore's Dark World into a black hole. The ultimate nullifier came into existence when the Watcher Emnu crafted it to counter the Procyllian invasion. Upon its activation, it obliterated the Procyllian Empire and a significant portion of the universe known as the Barons. Talk about a weapon of mass destruction. Johnny Storm and the Fantastic Four retrieved the ultimate nullifier from Ta-2, Galactus' home, under the guidance of Uatu, the Watcher. This handheld metallic device became the only known weapon to instill fear in Galactus himself, 
The ultimate nullifier resurfaced during the Infinity War when Quasar attempted to use it against the powerful Magnus. Despite Quasar's efforts, he failed to fire the weapon and was nullified in the process. From being in Dupe's possession to playing a pivotal role in Sam Alexander's journey as Nova, the ultimate nullifier found itself in unexpected situations. The Silver Surfer was tasked with retrieving the ultimate nullifier as a last resort against the Griever at the end of all things. Eventually, Franklin Richards, possessing intrinsic knowledge, was entrusted with the weapon, but found an alternative solution involving the Forever Gate. Described as the universe's most devastating weapon, the ultimate nullifier has the power to eliminate any target chosen by the wielder, including the wielder themselves. Marvel's inconsistency in the nullifier's location might find its explanation in the Bragas saga, revealing Galactus's ability to recall the weapon effortlessly. The Infinity Gauntlet Crafted by the Watcher M. New, the Infinity Gauntlet was designed to hold six soul gems, collectively known as the Infinity Gems. When combined, these gems grant the wearer unimaginable power, allowing them to shape reality itself. The mad titan Thanos assembled the Infinity Gauntlet by taking the gems from the Elders of the Universe. In a desperate attempt to win the affection of death, Thanos executed the infamous Snap, erasing half of the universe's population. Adam Warlock, among other surviving heroes, opposed Thanos and briefly seized the Infinity Gauntlet from Nebula. The Living Tribunal intervened, deeming the gems too dangerous together, leading to their separation and scattering. Mr. Fantastic, part of the secret group called the Illuminati, revealed their possession of the Infinity Gems. Fearing the combined power, they distributed the gems among themselves to prevent any misuse. The Hood's pursuit of the Infinity Gems led to battles and confrontations with the Illuminati. Iron Man ultimately wielded the Infinity Gauntlet using it strategically to thwart the Hood's plans. During the Incursions Crisis, the Illuminati reassembled the Infinity Gauntlet to deal with the threat. Captain America used its power to prevent the collision of alternate realities, resulting in the destruction of the gauntlet and shattering of most gems. The complete Infinity Gauntlet bestows its wielder with incredible abilities through each gem. Now listen up because these are slightly different from how they were portrayed in the movies. The Time Gem – Control over time-related aspects. The Space Gem – Manipulation of space and teleportation. The Soul Gem – Manipulation of souls and physical mental evolution. Reality Gem – Alternation of natural laws to the wielder's will. Power Gem – Control over all universal power. And the Mind Gem – Access to universal consciousness and psionic powers. The Infinity Gauntlet grants nigh omnipotence, surpassing even cosmic entities. Thanos wielding the gauntlet caused widespread devastation. However, it does have some limitations, such as its ability to destroy itself. While the Infinity Gauntlet and its gems grant unparalleled control over time, space, and power, there exists an even more formidable force, the heart of the universe. Created by Marvel's supreme being, this object of infinite proportions turns its possessor into the supreme being of the Marvel Universe, surpassing entities like the One Above All and the Fulcrum. Marvel's supreme being crafted the heart of the universe to correct an imbalance in the fundamental nature of the Marvel Universe. This extraordinary object stands as a testament to unrivaled power, making other devices and weapons pale in comparison. Although the heart of the universe hasn't made a canonical appearance in the main Marvel Universe, it has surfaced in an alternate reality. There, an alternate version of Thanos harnessed its power to create multiple timelines and birth entire universes into existence. Beyond Thanos, the only other beings to discover the heart of the universe were the Celestial Order, an alien race with ambitions to enforce their will on creation. However, their attempts proved futile, showcasing the immense challenges associated with wielding such power. Despite its absence in the main Marvel Universe, there has been a tantalizing hint that the heart of the universe might be hidden somewhere, waiting to be discovered.